Uh, really was a hard fought um, and a game that I think everyone enjoyed. I mean, I mean, I, I have so much respect for Herb Sendek. Um, he's one, a great coach, um, but he's a gentleman and uh, they've got a terrific team. And um, so we, we prepared hard and it felt like a league game. We had, we had great energy from our crowd and I, I don't know if it was our, the guys off the bench that lifted up our crowd late in the first half or our crowd lifting up the guys off the bench. But that group finished the, the first half really well, gave us a lead and I thought changed the game. But but it was a game where you we had to play the full 40 minutes. And I thought in the second half, the fact that we defended the three point line well was really key. And um, and we feel like it's a really good win because we we, we know they have a really good program. We'll open up to questions for Coach Fox, uh, first one from Rob Wang. Or Jeff, go ahead. We'll jump in with Jeff. Sure. Yeah, Coach, uh, you, you mentioned defense. Can you just talk about what you guys did to hold down Jalen Williams, who I think the last three games averaging almost 27 points a game and shooting about 67%. It looked like you threw about six different guys at him at different times. Talk about what the, what the plan was there. Well, I think the thing that our team, like that we didn't have early, that tonight was the first time you might have seen it with our team, we're starting to get healthy and have more guys. And so we can come at you in waves defensively and um, and we're bigger. So, you know, we could put, you know, Kwani on him a little bit, Jalen on him some, Obina on him some, Sam on him some, and, and, and you know, keep fresh bodies against a great player. And, um, and obviously he's been on a terror and is, he's a terrific player. And, um, you know, we wanted to take away his three point shot, but he's great off the bounce and um, we didn't shut him out, but we did limit him some. And I thought that was important. Thank you. Question from Rob Wang. Hey coach, um, Santa Clara was pretty effective running the pick and roll earlier in the game, uh, but you guys caught up to it and, and started to defend well against was it. Was there a, some change that you made or was it just an execution issue that you saw earlier on in the game that got adjusted as the game went on? Well, I think as you go through a game, you, you don't stick with the same coverage the entire game. I mean, teams, they, teams get comfortable. So you have to continue to change your coverages throughout the game, but you have to execute those things. And that's one of the great challenges for young players is recognizing who's in the, who's in the, the screen and roll, what is the coverage at that time in the game. And, and I think we just executed our defensive coverages better. Um, I thought that, that um, we were more reactive at the very start, uh, at the very beginning of the game. And, and I thought that we became a little bit more aggressive defensively as the game went, went on. Question from Trace Travers. Yeah, Coach, you mentioned your bench play at the end of the first half there. Uh, what, I guess, what did you see from Mikhail and Lars and Sam during that last stretch, that 14-0 stretch that put you guys ahead at the half? Well, you know, Sam brings great energy. Um, Mikhail brings great energy every day. They have big spirits, and, and it impacts the entire gym uh, on a daily basis. Lars has been getting better and better. And, um, you know, and, you know, as, as limited as we've been, we've had some guys log some major minutes. And I felt like Grant and Andre looked a little bit heavy-legged to start the game. And I thought, hey, you know what, let's, let's, let's go to the bench. And, and they gave us a great lift. And, and uh, they played so hard. They were, they were happy that the horn sounded for the half because they were playing really hard and they needed a blow too. But, but they, they really changed the game. And I think when we've talked to you and some of the players in the post game, they've said that Lars has done this stuff in practice, but he hasn't necessarily put it together in a game. These past two games, he looks like he has. What's changed for him? Well, I th I would say this about Lars. I would say this about um, Kwani. I would say this about Joel. Um, you know, I, I was talking to Bill Walton before this morning and I think we had 17 practices in between uh, indoors in between the time we beat Stanford uh, in the league tournament my first year and before we played our first game last year. So Lars and all these other guys, they, they didn't have an off season to, to develop. They weren't in the gym working out and they weren't in the, in the weight room lifting. They, they weren't able to, to experience the work in the off season that is so important because the magic is in the work. And so this offseason, it was, it was 
we were able to do that. And so Lars has, has improved. Um, and now he has some confidence on the court and is getting comfortable. And I think he'll only continue to get better. Question from Steve Croner. Yeah, Coach, congrats on the win. I know any win in college basketball is satisfying. But to beat a team that's in your backyard and the fact that there are people talking, you know, WCC versus the Pac-12, is there anything extra motivating about uh, either defending the uh, home turf or defending the Pac-12's reputation? Well, I'll say this. Um, every game is important, okay? Um, and... Um, and, you know, that league doesn't have football. So that's, that's all they, they could spend all their energy talking about basketball. And obviously Gonzaga has, has a really good team. Um, but, uh, you know, I, I, I would say that, that um, we have a lot of faith in our league, even though you know, some of us have some losses that, that um, you know, that, that were disappointing. But, but um, you know, um, we need to play well against everybody. Uh, local teams, teams away from home. And uh, as we rebuild our program, um, every win that we can get is important. But uh, certainly, um, you know, if you look at, at, at the local schools, like um, this was a big win. When we beat USF last year, it was a big win. When we beat Stanford last time, it was a big win. So hopefully we can continue that. Great. Thank you. Another question from Jeff Ferrara. Mark, uh, we've talked to you about Andre uh, over the last several weeks. Can you sort of give us an overview on your thoughts on his his real significant progress from a year ago and things he's doing better and and the fact that he's been able to develop so much consistency for you guys? Well, again, I go back to having an off season. You know, um, I go back to to, uh, to him being able to put the work in. He's in better he's in better shape. Um, he's a better athlete. Um, he, he's. He's just physically, uh, you know, in a much better place this year than he was last year. Um, and, you know, I think that I said in my first year, maybe last year, maybe my first year, that, that me and Dre needed to go to counseling about where he, he could learn to score from, you know. Um, but he's figured it out. Like, you know, he'll carve out space and he can score over both shoulders and and, um, and he can shoot the face-up jumper. But he, he's a tough cover right now, which is why he's drawing two defenders and, he got a great assist today to, to I believe, Shepard. And he had another one out of a timeout that he, that he read perfectly that we missed a layup on. And he's really developed as a player. But the magic's in the work. And that young man's done the work, and he continues to improve. And it appears when he gets the ball, even in a crowd, he's very composed, takes his time, gathers himself, and figures out what he wants to do. Are you impressed by how much calmer he is on the floor? Well, really good frontline players, they can, they can slow down and play in a crowd. Um, and Andre's developed the ability to slow down and play in the crowd. And he knows where to put the ball um, if, if his, you know, attack is not there. And so he's just really playing like an upperclassman, and it's, it's been, been great to see his development. Yeah, Andre, you guys uh, have poked above, above 500 for the first time this year. Can you talk about the things the team is doing better recently and especially tonight? Um, we just played hard tonight. Um, I think there's a lot of games we had throughout the season that we were right there, um, make a shot, uh, you know, get a stop. Uh, Seton Hall uh, was one game right there with um, UNLV on the road. So there, were, there were some games where we were just right there the whole season. Um, so we knew we had what it took. Um, and there was just a little more, a little bit more we had to get over. So once we've uh, started working hard in practice and doing those things, it's helped us get over that bump. You don't seem to be rattled as a team when things aren't going super perfectly. Do you see a, a growing maturity in your team and a big difference from, let's like, say, a year ago? I think so, yeah. Um, we know that during basketball games, there's going to be runs, um, whether we make a run or the other team makes a run. Um, I think we understand that that's going to happen at some point within the game. So knowing that, we just stay confident within ourselves and um, just go back to our principles, you know, um, trying to get stops and make shots. And we know if we do those things, then um, we'll be okay. Thanks, Andre. Question from Trey Travers, Cal Rapper. Yeah, Andre, I think he scored 14 or 18 in the second half. What changed for you? Was it just a matter of uh, Jordan getting the ball in a little more to you or were you just a little more, you know, used to what you were seeing in the second half? Uh, Jordan did a great job, I think, um, just finding me for some easy, some easy buckets, the pick and roll. Um, credit to him, he's a great passer. So I love playing with him. Um, that pick and roll game, he was just putting it right there for me. All I had to do was lay it in. Um, so that was a huge thing, I think, um, that contributed. Second half. Question from Steve Croner. 
Andre, to pick up on that. I mean, he fed you quite a, quite often down the stretch, but maybe the biggest play of the night was you feeding him. I know you were double teamed. It almost looked like you were going to be triple teamed. How were you able to see him cross court and make that pass? Um, I've been working on it. You know, I know that um, when you when you score more and things like that, teams are going to send uh, different you know strategies. That be a double team, triple team at me. So um, Coach Vox and my coach has been telling me to help me just read, um, you know, where the double team is coming from. Um, who might be open. So I kind of have an idea when teams double me, where the, I can see where the double comes from and then know um, who might be open. So I'll go through my reads, my looks. And then um, I saw Shep open. He's a great shooter. So I was like, That's a, I'll get it to him. Sometimes guys who score a lot and don't get a lot of assists will say, you know what, by one or two assists, they actually, I, I feel better. I take more pride in that than the 15, 18 I scored. Was that assist uh, as, as big a play as you made them, uh, tonight? Yeah, it feels great. You know, whether I score or the, my teammates score. Um, I just want to win at the end of the day. So I'm not too too caught up in, you know, who's doing all the scoring. Um, I was happy that, you know, Shep, I was happy to reward Shep because he'd been giving me some easy ones all night. So I was happy to get him one that uh, he was able to knock through. Fair enough. Thank you. Jordan, congratulations. Hey, can you talk about uh, the fact that you won a game despite missing 10 straight shots at one point as a team and what that says about the way you guys play defensively, especially against Jalen Williams, their, their big guard? Yeah, like you said, um, we made it to the point where we weren't scoring, but we wanted to make sure that they weren't scoring either. And, you know, that's what we tried to do. Um, you know, sometimes teams are going to make runs. Sometimes you're going to get cold. You got to be able to sustain that and keep going. And that's what we did. What did you guys do? It looked like you ran about six different players at Williams during the game. What was it like guarding him? And what did you try to do against him? Uh, I just tried to get him out the middle. Um, they like to do a lot of stuff in the middle, middle ball screens, get him going. Uh, he likes to go left. Um, so we're just trying to get him out of his spots, out of his operational areas, and do the best that we can. And if I could follow up, you guys are above 500 for the first time all year. What does it feel like? And do you feel like you're starting to come together a little bit? Yeah, yeah it feels great. It feels like, you know, all the hard work is starting to pay off. You know, we're starting to do the things that, you know, we wish we would have done before, but we're doing them right now, and it's working out for us. Thanks, Jordan. Question from Trace Travers. Jordan, you guys were tied at uh, 53 in the second half there and then ran away with it. What did you, what was the message when they managed to tie it up after you guys had been up for most of the second half? Uh, just to keep our poise. Um, we didn't want to get rattled. Teams are going to make runs. Um, and that was the message that Coach Fox gave us. It was like, you know, we have to sustain our, you know, sustain our defense. You know, offense, it'll come. It'll come. We have Dre. We have Grant. We have guys that can put the ball in the basket. So that'll come. But – we just wanted to make sure that, you know, we play defense and defended them well. And like I said, get them out there operational areas. Yeah. And I think we've asked you about Andre a bunch of times here, but you were feeding him tonight. Uh, what can you say that you haven't already said about his performances during these home games that we've seen over the last couple of weeks? Um, I would say our chemistry is working really well together. Um, he's proved to be a dominant force in the paint. He's proved that all season. He's done it against the best bigs. And, you know, that's what we're used to seeing. And, you know, it was great to be out there with him and playing with him. Question from Steve Cronner, San Francisco. Hey, Jordan, I'll take you back uh, to late in the first half. Things did not look very good for you at all. You're down, I think, 11 and then still down 10 late. And then you scored the last 14. What flipped the switch uh, in the last four, four and a half minutes for you guys to do that? Uh, we started defending better, um, and the ball started going in. Um, started off a little cold, got cold at certain points. They made runs, but, you know, we were able to stay poised, keep our composure, and we were able to start defending better. Then we got eight stops in a row at one point. Um, so that's what, that's what changed the game for us. I know you're not from around here, but I assume you know the geography. Um, is it anything special to beat a team that's a Bay Area team and, and a team, Santa Clara, that's been pretty darn good this season? Yeah, yeah, it means a lot. Um, you know, like I, like you said, you know, I, I'm not really familiar with the area, but I know it means a lot to everyone around me, which means it means a lot to me um, to be able to beat, you know, teams that are from this area. It means a lot.